Hello, who? I'm Gary, and this is episode 49 of EV Musings, a podcast about renewables, electric vehicles, and things that are interesting to electric vehicle owners. On the show today, we'll be discussing what happens if you need to go back to driving an internal combustion engine vehicle. Before we start, I just wanted to see if you've heard that Britain has just gone two full months without using coal. This is a tremendous achievement, and it's the longest time the country has gone without burning coal since before the Industrial Revolution. Obviously, the good weather we're having and the decreased electricity requirement due to lockdown is helping, but it is a great step towards lowering the country's carbon footprint. Our feature topic today concerns going back to driving an internal combustion engine vehicle. Obviously, it's not something we really want to do, but there are situations where it can happen, and I'll talk about one in a second. And I wanted to take you through what that experience is like. Since the start of lockdown, I've been very fortunate in that I've managed to remain employed, despite the fact that all my proper job income disappeared. Perils of being self-employed in two industries where face-to-face interaction is a requirement. I was lucky enough to be taken on by one of the large supermarket chains as a delivery driver for their new home delivery service. Obviously, this is something which is vitally important in this time of social distancing and lockdown. And as a result, I found myself to be delivering literally dozens of drops per shift across the length and breadth of my nearest large town. But the downside to this was that the vehicles they were using for these deliveries were diesel vans. Now, before we go any further, I need to make a couple of things crystal clear. One, I've never driven a diesel vehicle before. All my driving so far was in petrol vehicles or EVs. And two, the circumstances I'm talking about now are a result of needing to rush into a situation in a limited time frame due to COVID-19 and will, I hope, change as we move forward. The company I work for has rented three diesel vans to use for grocery deliveries. There are two Mercedes Sprinters and a Renault something or other. And I have to say that in both cases, these vehicles are absolutely atrocious. Even if I'd been driving them two years ago before I got my EV, I would have remarked about how sluggish they were from a standing start and how agricultural they sounded when compared with a petrol vehicle. But since driving an EV, my attitude towards vehicles like this is remarkably different. Overall, the driving experience is very bad. The vehicle rattles and shakes, and that's without the noise of the diesel engine, just the design of the van, and it wallows over the road due to soft suspension. Now, don't get me wrong, inside the vehicles, especially the Mercedes, is quite well appointed. Very light power steering, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, adjustable steering wheel, and, uh, well, that's about it, actually. I mean, the vans, not limos. But this isn't meant to be a slight on the design aesthetic of the Mercedes. It's focusing on what the problems are going to be driving an ICE vehicle when being used to driving an EV. The key thing to remember is that all these things that drew you to the EV driving experience are the same things that are going to detract from the diesel driving experience. For a start, the acceleration on these vans is woeful. And I don't mean the 0 to 60 time is bad. It is, but this is a diesel delivery van, not a Formula One car. So I'm not expecting there to be neck snapping acceleration. But it's amazing just how poor the 0 to 15 miles per hour part of the drive is. Pulling out from roundabouts is an exercise in ensuring you have the right gear engaged. Too high and the acceleration will be zero. Too low and the need to change gear immediately will cause a loss of pull. On many occasions, I've pulled up to a roundabout, floored the pedal and waited literally a second or so before the engine amassed enough torque to physically start moving the vehicle forward. And let's not even think about the safety issues inherent in that statement. Being used to the instant pull from an EV, it can take a while to get used to the way diesel and fossil fuel cars in general accelerate, or don't, as the case may be. The problems don't stop there, though. Remember, this is a vehicle with gears. Every gear change will result in the van losing power momentarily as the engine disengages and re-engages. This causes some quite low-level but constant stress to the driver's body. The body's thrown forwards and backwards each time this happens, especially if changing down to a lower gear. Over time, this causes fatigue, and more about that later. The problem is compounded by the second issue, which is that of regen. Obviously, a diesel van has none. Even though I've driven fossil fuel vehicles for 35 of my 37 years as a driver, I'm astonished how easily the muscle memory for single pedal driving has overtaken the muscle memory for braking and changing down a gear. So much so that several times heading to a traffic light or a roundabout, I live in a town with a lot of roundabouts. No, not that town, the other one. 
I find myself expecting the van to start slowing and I'm taken off guard by the fact I need to actually brake and change down a gear to make it stop. This has a knock-on effect at the end of the day. When I finish my shift with the delivery van, I get back into my EV and I drive along some of the same roads I've been dieseling along only 15 minutes earlier. I find myself approaching a roundabout, I take my foot off the pedal and start to brake to make the car slow down. The regen kicks in at the same time and I find myself coming to a stop dozens of yards before the junction. I've also had to fill the diesel van up several times since I've been driving it. Luckily the cost is covered by the company and boy am I glad it is. The first time I filled it I put almost £70 worth of diesel in and that's enough to recharge my Kia Soul 46 times at an overnight rate of 5 pence per kilowatt hour and under worst case conditions that's almost 4,600 miles. But the other thing that still astonishes me about this whole palaver is the fact that diesel is an absolutely atrocious product to use. I'll admit, and deny it if questioned in future, that from time to time I quite like the smell of petrol. Not a lot, but in small doses and very occasionally. Diesel, however, ugh, smells as bad going in as it does going out. Gloves are needed, spills are messy, it's just a bad idea. It's also the first time in 18 months I've actually used a pump at a petrol station. Sure, I've used petrol stations in the intervening 18 months. I've still checked my tyre pressures and BP Charge Master and Shell have high power chargers there as well. But as far as actually going through the refuelling process itself, it's only when you're forced to look at it from the point of view of there's an alternative to this that you realise just how ridiculous it is. You drive up to a pump, you select the right fuel for your vehicle, and just to make it a little challenging, the petrol and diesel nozzles are situated right next to each other and both can fit into my diesel van. If I put the wrong one in, however, it produces a cosmic singularity or something similar that will end the world. And then I have to wait until some individual in the booth initiates the charge. I mean, resets the pump to zero before I can fill up. Then I have to stand there at my vehicle holding a dirty pump, breathing in diesel fumes for several minutes, while watching a total cost counter spin around faster than a slot machine display at a granny convention in Las Vegas. Finally, the machine cuts out. I note the amount on the dial, refix the cap on the tank, put the nozzle back, wipe everything down, including my hands, and leave. Oh, wait, I forgot to pay. That's right. I then have to head into the shop alongside all the other social distancing drivers, and wait in line while the overworked young server behind the counter sorts out petrol, cigarettes, groceries and alcohol while also trying to serve a coffee to the two guys who've just come in to wash their car and decided they wanted to talk about how bad things are since the footy was stopped. I could be in there for 10 minutes while all this goes on. But here's the kicker. All of that would be acceptable, indeed was acceptable to me 18 plus months ago, if the experience I was getting from driving the van was any good. But once I get home and sit on my sofa, I find myself absolutely exhausted. Sure, I've been lifting and carrying crates of groceries into and out of the back of the van, but the whole driving experience with the diesel is far less relaxing than with an EV. I find myself tense. I find I ache more. I often have a dull throbbing in the head. The whole experience of driving a noisy, clattering diesel van is far from relaxing and much more stressful, even subconsciously, than an EV. When Simon and I drove a thousand kilometres in a single day in his i3, I can honestly say that the physical experience of driving such a long distance was completely pleasurable. The car was smooth, the noise was minimal and the stress was minor. A thousand kilometres in an EV was easier on the physical and mental aspects of my day than 60 miles in a diesel van was. But had you pointed that out to me two years ago when I was still driving a fossil fuel vehicle, I would have said you were exaggerating. So, to summarise, the driving experience is loud, uncomfortable, stressful. The acceleration seems poor, regen braking is non-existent, gear changes are needed, causing juddering in the vehicle. The whole experience is very, very poor. We've said it literally dozens of times on this podcast that the best way to get people into an EV is to physically get them into an EV. And the corollary to that is that the best way to keep people in an EV is to put them back in an ICE vehicle. I can see no reason why anyone with an EV would intentionally decide they found the ICE vehicle experience better than that of an electric car. Or am I wrong? Time to share a cool renewable or EV thing with you listeners. We're big fans of Fully Charged here on the podcast and we were especially interested in the Fully Charged show video released this week. 
where Bobby Llewellyn had a discussion with James Kellaway, Energy Intelligence Manager from National Grid. The discussion covers topics such as the hardiness of the infrastructure that's been in place for over 50 years. Hint, it's quite good. The ability of the grid to manage EVs charging at the same time. Hint, it can and the fact that we're starting to see the overall average CO2 level drop as we head towards the government-mandated 2050 target. It's an excellent listen. And by the way, following my appeal at the end of last week's podcast, nobody appears to have tweeted me the required phrase, so the money remains unclaimed. I guess my suggestion that nobody listens to the end was an accurate one. And that's the show for today. Hope you enjoyed listening to it. If you want to contact me, use the EV Musings Twitter account, Musings EV. If you're wanting a quick reference ebook to read on your Kindle, I wrote a little something called So You've Gone Electric. It's available on Amazon Worldwide for the measly sum of 99p or equivalent, and it's a great little introduction to living with an electric car. At the moment, it is free on Kindle Unlimited, or if you're in the Kindle Lending Library. Check it out. You might learn something. Links for everything I've talked about in the podcast today are in the description. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe. It's available on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Please leave a review as it helps raise our visibility and extend our reach in search engines. Thanks as always to my co-founder Simon. You know, he can always tell when he's been spending too long thinking about topics for his YouTube channel. The signs are easy to spot. I find I ache more, I often have a dull throbbing in the head. Thanks for listening. Bye!